see the fins if you move anymore. Yeah, my bronze is a bit. My neck's are completely white and then my cheeks are a bit. Why are you so much taller than me? I up, put it up, down, oh. shake it all around. <laughs> Welcome back <laughs> to my channel. My name's Fiona, this is Amy. I'm Fiona, likes to blog on Instagram and on Twitter and Amy is ICANN cards. Do you want to tell the people what ICANN cards is? Um, they are 25 affirmation cards around meaningful subjects so such as depression and anxiety, single parent and then, and then I also do self-love and I can do this. Have you got any a box handy? Well you may as well. Yeah. Yeah so that's what they look like. I used to do the vlog I think. Oh yeah <laughs> that's it. So we we met on Instagram uh, and we've become friends and this is the first time that we've met in real life and we've decided that we will be friends forever. Well, so, it's only been a few Well, hours. till tomorrow when I go home. Um, so in fact, I haven't seen you drunk yet. So that's true. As long as you don't like punch someone when we're out or something. I don't get aggressive, I'll just fall asleep. Okay. And we're doing the mental health tag which I just found online somewhere and we've adapted it to our own personal tastes. So, the first question is, what is your mental illness? I'm left a bit with anxiety, but that has never been diagnosed. But I suffered with both children with postnatal depression, so that was nice, okay. both children. And mine is depression and anxiety. So it's kind of similar to you, like I had uh, a mental breakdown and then was diagnosed with depression and then the anxiety kind of came yeah. later on. Which I think is quite common, like they think they tend to go hand in hand. Hand in hand, yeah, yeah, I think so. Or I think it's quite surprising how many people notice anxiety before they notice the depression and stuff. Mm, yeah, I think because when I went to the doctor, they said that I had stress, and yeah. then after two weeks, that's when my depression actually like came to the surface. Yeah, and that's when it all became like real. The moment you realised you needed help. Mine was when I was out for a driving lesson. I was doing le driving lessons and I drove on the wrong side of the road and didn't realise. <laughs> and my instructor <laughs> had to make me pull over and ask me what was wrong. And I was like, uh, 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 mm. my, my brain's not working. Like, And then I thought, because I knew for like a few weeks leading up to that that my brain wasn't working properly because I, I had a really stressful like management job and every day I would have a list of things to do and I was just looking at it like I don't, I don't know how to do these mm -hmm. things like I can't I know I have to make a phone call to make that happen but I can't you can't, can't yeah. pick up the phone I can't have that conversation so clearly something is not working here what about you I think I realized really really late on when I had like suicidal thoughts so I used to have feelings of I don't want to wake up in the morning so mm -hmm. I'd never want to do anything about it but I just used to like go to bed and like hope and pray but I but with postnatal depression you're so tired mm. and you just had a baby and everyone goes on about these baby blues thing and your hormones and stuff like mm -hmm. that with Finn I didn't have the detachment thing was often associated with postnatal depression right. so I thought he was like the loveliest most amazing thing I'd ever seen right. so I didn't have that so I, so I wasn't connecting all the dots. And it wasn't even the first time thinking that, because I remember the first time I thought it, I thought maybe that's just because I really want some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like an death, death would be yeah. the best sleep ever. Not that makes nice sense. Sleep. Yeah. But then when I thought it like more than a few times and started thinking, you know, people are better off if I'm not here and stuff like that, that mm. was when. So I realised really, really late on. And the health visitors were seeing me sort of every day and stuff. Yeah. Because they do when you have a baby. And none of them picked up on it. And um, I've got um, my licence, I'll sh show you later. Um, so I went to get, like, my licence renewed and the, the picture of it is the picture when I've got postnatal depression. Oh. <laughs> I, I think if anyone had seen you, you'd be like, are you alright? Uh -huh. Because just like visually, yeah, like I was and they just didn't pick like, up on no, it. they didn't, they didn't at all. So, so who was the first person that you told? My mum. So I think she realised and she said, "Oh, I think you need to go to the doctors." And I was like, "What for?" And she was like, "I think you, um, you've got depression." Mm -hmm. So it was my mum. What about you? Mine was a doctor. 
Well, maybe. Yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't think that I had depression. I just thought I was really stressed and I just thought I'm sick of how much work I've got on. Like, because basically a lot of people left and I, I was doing like three people's jobs mm. and I was like, I'm sick of this, it's not fair. I'm going to I'm gonna phone in sick. Like, I'm going to get a sick line. I can't be bothered with this anymore. But obviously I needed it for other reasons and eventually I went to the doctor and I thought, no, actually, I explained all my symptoms and I just started crying and she was like, oh, you're definitely, like, I can see that you're like mm. in distress kind of thing. Was your GP really good then? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 really nice. Mine was as well. Um, and she said, oh, I think you've definitely got um, some work-related stress. So that was what was on my mm. line, but after two weeks, it, it, it turned out to be a lot worse. So the next question is, what treatment have you had? My mum was like, please get medication just for like short term and mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm, I'm really like anti even taking paracetamol. Okay. I'd rather like listen to what my is like stupid in it. So I was really anti medication, but actually in the short term it really helped me to um, to get back on my feet because mm -hmm. I'd got so deep into it. Yeah. Because I realised so late. So yeah, medication I tried, and then mindfulness as well. That um, that really helped me, and exercise were okay. the three main things that I treated mine with. Mm -hmm. As soon as I went to the doctor, she gave me. Um, beta blockers because mm. she was like oh it's, it's stress and this will like calm, calm you down mm. but then after two weeks when I went back I said like I really I really feel like hopeless and like mm. I just feel like don't want to go on kind of thing she took me off them straight away and put me on antidepressants mm. I'm, I've taken paracetamol since, like since I was a teenager mm. so I've, ne I've never had an issue taking tablets and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but I've been on three three different types of medication until I found the one that worked and I've been on it ever since yeah and I've had uh I've taken anxiety meds as well but I've only taken them like on and off like mm. when it's been really bad so do you notice a difference if you ever sort of run out or mm -hmm. anything like that with your medication yeah 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 it's really bad okay like, um but I know if I because some, some nights, if I forget, I'm like, oh, I must remember tomorrow. Mm. But say I forget three nights in a row, like, I'll know that I just don't feel right. And then it's silly because then to, when you start taking it again, even if it's three days, it like, it really knocks me out. Because yeah. I take mirtazapine, it makes me really tired. Mm. And I also did CBT, but it was in a group setting and I didn't mm. like it. Sorry, I did CBT in pregnancy because mm -hmm. they picked up that I might be um, depressed and stuff in pregnancy, but then didn't... <laughs> Didn't, didn't check like, up on yeah, it. Yeah, didn't like check up on it and stuff. It was in London though, and I think they're like a lot more stretched in yeah. London. But yeah, so I had CBT in pregnancy as well, right. actually, to try and be proactive about it and stuff, because I was feeling like hopeless and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and I, I found that quite helpful. So that, that she did the body scan thing mm -hmm. and stuff like that, so that was nice. I'm so glad we did the CBT course because, because now, <laughs> because when I look it. back, I, I can draw on some of the knowledge, but at the time it was a really stressful experience. Mm. The guy who took the class was a customer in the shop that I worked in. Oh God. And it was really awkward. So I just, I went in and sat like this for the full hour. Did you? And just like, in my, I was physically like mm. this, cause I was like so anxious. Mm -hmm. There's your phone. Um, <laughs> and I'd every, I did, oh, it was like 10 weeks long and every week when I went home, I cried my eyes out. Cause Aww. I was just exhausted. Like I just hated it. But now I did. I definitely did absorb some of it and learned mm. something from it. What's your most embarrassing mental health moment? So I like, like in a this zombie postnatal depression state, like almost stormed stormed up to this other mum in like a park, and I'm and Finn was like asleep in the pram and he was only about six weeks old, oh. and I said, "Will you will you be my friend? I live round the corner and here's my number." She was just like. <laughs> Okay, and in London, everyone's like not. Oh, that was in London. Yeah, in London. Oh. So she, I think she could see I was like mentally unwell. Mm -hmm. but I think she was more like, oh my oh. god, I just want to get this nutter away from me. Excellent. Did she but, have a baby? Yeah, she did. Yeah. yeah. But the back story behind it was that I was like relentlessly going to these like mum and baby groups, but mm -hmm. with like a newborn, just because I was desperate to meet like uh -huh. another mum and stuff. Because I thought that's what it was. I felt quite isolated, and um, and everyone I was like making friends with or giving my number to they weren't like calling me it mm. felt like a dating scenario or something and then this one i just thought i'm just gonna go up to her and say 
and then it just all came out wrong because my oh, mind wasn't yeah. working so I was like will you be my friend he is my number <laughs> and I actually was like oh will you be my friend he is my number and I'd like also was like so who carries around like a bit of paper she must have Did you pre it yeah so it was like so weird like oh. I look back and just that is definitely my most embarrassing that's not that bad. bad. What's yours? I think mine is like before before I knew that I was like about to have a breakdown, like I was like highly, like I was definitely anxious, but I didn't realise it. So mm. I was constantly on high alert because I was so mm. anxious all the time. So I was really, really irritable, especially at work. And I was in a management job, so I was like really stressed all the time. Mm. And like I always say it's like spinning plates. I just felt like I was constantly like just putting out one fire and then like yeah. tending to another like that all the time. One of the staff members asked me where the tomatoes were and I just lost my shit. Did she? Uh -huh. <laughs> Obviously she must have thought we were really approachable. She was like, Fiona, like, wait, do you know if there's any tomatoes in the fridge downstairs? And I just was like, <sighs> Did you fucking tomatoes? I was like, I've got this, this, this and this to worry about. Like, do you think I've got time to worry about it? tomatoes are. I was like, it's your job to know where the tomatoes are. Later on, I had to like ask her to come into my office. I was like, I'm really sorry what I said there were the tomatoes. And she was like, it's okay. Yeah, like, it's clearly, fine. She was just like, can I go now? I was like, I'm so sorry. And yeah, that was one of the moments where I was like, what's wrong with me? So that's it. Try to end it on a funny note. Um, leave below in the comments your most embarrassing mental health yeah. moment. Yeah. If hopefully like, we're not trying to belittle mental illness. We obviously that's what we talk about all the yeah. time, but I think it's important to try and see the humour in the sad times. Yeah, especially like afterwards, because obviously both those stories are like quite sad as mm. well. But yeah, I think it's really important to be able to, and for you to know that you're not alone if you go up to mums as well. Mm. We've got you. In, we understand. Yeah, or if you go nuts about tomatoes, <laughs> it's absolutely fine. <laughs> so you can find Amy on Instagram as I can cards, and you can find me. I'll leave all our links in the description bar below as well, so you can um, come say hello and like this video and please subscribe if you want to see more. Bye.